Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. This channel was created to promote my self published masterpiece, The N Word is No Secret in the Service. I wrote this book after I spent over 10 years as an officer in the United States Secret Service. During this time, I learned what true foundational institutionalized or systemic workplace racism is and how it affects my people. If you would like to purchase this masterpiece, just click the link down in the description. If you enjoy the content and would like to support the channel, please continue to like, share, and subscribe. In addition, if you would like to make a donation, we do have a cash app, which is dollar sign runaway slave 609. Okay, let's cook. Okay, peoples, so this story right here takes place in Wrightsville, Arkansas, in the year of 1959. It happened at a place called the Negro Boys Industrial School. Now, a little bit more about this industrial school, okay? So this industrial school was ran by the state, and it was a place where they put black boys aged 13 to 17 if they had nowhere to go, if, they're, if they were like an orphan, or if they were mentally ill, or if they were found guilty of some kind of petty crime like stealing or riding a bike that they shouldn't be riding on or doing one of those little petty things uh, this is where they were sent to, you know, this um, school in Wrightsville called the Negro Boys Industrial School, things like theft and things like that. Now, again, the boys in this school were aged 13 and 17, and the boys who were in this facility, they were forced to pick cotton as a part of their work duties as well, okay? So, yes, as we know as, as black people, when we think cotton, we then think about whippings, Yes, the whippings did come with the cotton picking. Okay, so they said that if these boys did anything, you know, that was against the disciplinary code or anything like that, they were whipped for things like that. Um, the building that these boys slept in was an old, beat-down, unkept building, and it was not uh, suitable for human living. They said that the boys at this school didn't even have the basics like underwear and socks and things like that. They also have been reported to have a 30-gallon water tank that was used for all of them to take a bath and wash up. Really disgusting conditions for any human being. This is almost like um, an animal at the zoo or something like that. Now, we know that the boys at this school, they clearly didn't get the care that they were supposed to have. You know, it was very inhumane. And again, this is in a disgusting state of Arkansas in the year of 1959. Now, the governor of Arkansas, a cracker by the name of Orville Faubus, in, in the year of 1957, he visited this school and he spoke about the horrible, condition, the horrible conditions in this school and what was going on, how this is how bad it was. This, this guy, Orville Faubus, known to be a real Knuckle dragon, beast, white supremacist, cracker. He visited this place and even he said the conditions were horrible. But even with all the power that he had as the governor, he's the one who could do something. He did absolutely nothing to change or improve the conditions at this school. OK, all he did was said something. OK, now a little bit more about this, this guy, Orville Faubus, because he was the governor at this time, you know, and. He's the same person who sent troops to Central High School to keep the nine black students from integrating the school. You remember that incident? We all remember that. The students, you know, they called the Little Rock, they, they, they called them the Little Rock Nine. And these students, they actually thought that the National Guard was coming to school to protect them. But no, the National Guard was called to the school to make sure that they don't get inside and to keep them out. And these students dealt with, you, you can see from these pictures that they have throughout history, you know, you have these, these, these uh, white men, you have these loud, nasty, infected white women out here yelling at a few black, nine black kids just for going into a school. So this is the reflection of the state of Arkansas at this time and the governor or anybody else, primarily the white community. This is an overall reflection of who they are now. So. Something, something else interesting about this, this uh, school, this jail, this facility, or this slave camp that they have these black children aged 13 to 17 in. The superintendent of this school was a black man by the name of Lester Gaines. Now, history says that 
Lester Gaines, he reportedly did everything he could to try to get money and aid for this school. He, they said he went into overdrive, constantly begging, asking for things that this school needed, but he was always ignored, okay? He never got anything that he said that he needed for this, this school. So here's the turning point to this story, and here's, here's where the tragedy comes in. On March 5th, 1959, in the early morning around 4 a.m., this is a uh, early morning, 4 a.m. is is con- is currently overcast and it's raining at this time. So there's a dormitory where the boys slept at. OK, there's 69 black boys in this one dormitory. There's 69 of them. One of the boys named Arthur Ray Poole said he smelled smoke. OK, so he, he got up. He smelled smoke. Now, here's a hint that's important. A vocational teacher who normally slept in a room next to the dorm where the boys slept He had been in the hospital for two weeks, so he wasn't there. Okay, that's another hint. He wasn't there. He's he's been in the hospital for two weeks. Okay, so one of the boys smelled smoke. Shortly after that, they noticed that there was fire in their room. This is a dormitory, almost like a barrack where, you know, you see guys in the old military movies sleeping at. Okay, so now there's a fire and there's there's a fire everywhere in this dorm. Now, it's also raining outside. And this happened out of the blue, by the way. Now, this fire is spreading throughout the dorm. We have boys jumping up, pandemonium. They're running, they're screaming, they're fighting. They're going nuts quite naturally to try to get up out of there. You know what I mean? They're trying to run to safety. Now, the first place you're going to try to go is to the doors, right? They, the boys run to the door. They try to open the door and get out. But there are padlocks on the door from the outside. So they couldn't get out. They're locked inside. Now, you could just imagine the panic when there's a fire in the place and the one place that you know to try to use to get out, which is a door, is locked. You can't get out. You can't get out. This is 69 boys in one dormitory. So you can imagine that these boys are wild and they're probably pretty much almost would kill each other just trying to get out before the fire got to them, right? Now, there's no way out through the doors. So... Now what they try to do is some of them try to bash the windows open. They try to bash the windows open to get out, but they couldn't get through the metal mesh on the windows. Luckily, there were a few boys who were outside who were were on guard duty, and they were able to help them rip some of these windows open, and they were able to get out. Okay, So out of those boys who were there, 49 of them made it outside to safety. 49 of them made it outside. But 20, 21 of them weren't so lucky. 21 of these black children died in this fire. They found the bodies of these 21 boys in a corner in this room, all piled on top of each other. And quite a few of the boys who made it out to safety, they were also burned as well. This horrible event here is known as the Wrightville, Wrightsville Massacre, or some people who know more about it, who have studied it and looked into it, call it the secret Holocaust, which I call it the same as well. This is definitely a massacre. This is definitely a Holocaust. This is absolutely ridiculous. Now, to this day, there are people who have looked into this event, into this massacre, and they say that it was a perfectly orchestrated Holocaust, and it was designed to kill all 69 of the boys who were in this dorm. But they didn't get all of them. But they say it was designed to kill all 69 of them. There are people who will live and die by that, who have looked into it, okay? Now, remember I said that the superintendent of the school was a black man by the name of Lester Gaines. Well, guess what? Of course, he's the scapegoat. This white governor named Orville Faubus, this knuckle-dragging, disgusting beast, he blamed Lester Gaines for this event for this massacre for this horrible thing that happened to these boys he said that had he been doing his thing or had he took precautions this wouldn't have had to happen so of course put all the blame on him but you got to remember y'all this is the same governor who just visited the, the school two years prior spoke on how horrible the conditions were at this school yet he has all the power to do something and he did absolutely nothing now this happens and of course like we said about many of the people from the white community They do not like to accept accountability for anything. And he's blaming this this poor black man who had this job. Now, do I believe this black man knows something else? Yeah, I do. I do. 
you know, and I don't even know if all of us wouldn't have been able to even do his job. I don't really know. I can't really go at the man because he was going to work. Uh, pretty much was a correctional officer at a horrible facility. I can't go at the man because I don't know everything about him. But I do believe he knows more about this. And I'm not saying he's guilty or anything like that. He just had a horrible job that he was in, you know. Now, the white community is saying that this happened due to lightning or or faulty wiring or something like that. But my thing is this. You should know why it happened. Where is the where are the arson experts? They know why it happened. You, you know the difference between lightning and wiring. Like you can get to the bottom line and say, hey, this happened because of this, this, this and this. And this is why many black people who have actually looked into this don't believe this to be true at all. You know, to this day, nobody was ever held accountable for this massacre, y'all, for this for this Holocaust of these black children. You know, who put the locks on the doors? You know, which was not state protocol, by the way. They didn't have to have the locks on those doors. And it seemed like the way this happened, it happened when, like the man said, this was a well-orchestrated thing where they wanted to take out all 69 of these black boys because the, 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 the vocational man who, the teacher who has a room next to the boy, he was out on hospital, medical leave, or whatever. It just seemed like, you know, this was definitely orchestrated and set up, especially at this time in this state, to, you know, just take out all of these black children, you know. Um, now, listen to this, y'all. This is horrible. Out of the 21 boys who burned to death in his fire, only seven of them had families who would claim their bodies, okay? So family, seven of these boys had private funerals because their families claimed their bodies. They say that the remains of the boys of the fire were wrapped in newspapers, they were wrapped in newspapers, and 14 of those boys who were unclaimed were buried in a mass, unmarked grave. To this day, nobody knows where these 14 boys are buried. They just know the location, but they don't know the actual place. They said it just, they just buried them in the mass grave. Now, here's another thing. Many people who were there at this time, who have studied this, who have looked into this, said they don't believe that they buried anything. They don't believe that they buried the remains of any of these boys. They said they were wrapped up in pieces in um newspaper. And they don't believe this because they, they don't have evidence of this, you know. And, and the people that you're dealing with here, you know, in the white community at this time, you can't put anything past them. These people don't have any respect or humility for anything that was other than not even for themselves. But you could just imagine, you know, a black person. And to this day, there's no cause of what happened. No arson reports, nothing. And of course, we know there's more to it. We know that there's, there's more to be said about this. And this is just this is just an act of just plain evil, malice, you know, racism from the white community in Arkansas. And that includes the government as well. There's also a book written about this massacre, a book by somebody named Griff Stokely. It's called Black Boys Burning, the 1959 Fire at the Arkansas Negro Boys Industrial School. So this man actually, he wrote a book about this. Um, people were very upset about this tragedy um, at, this, at the time. And then the people who have not forgot about this, the people who don't have trauma-based amnesia who are still alive that know about this, they're still very upset about this because nothing was done about this. Now, at the time, a lot of people wrote this devil named Orville Faubus, this, this, this governor, some of the letters that were wrote to him, there was a letter that came from Los Angeles that says, your support of a, a, a pol your support of a policy of segregation and of second class citizenship for the Negro people helped to create this Holocaust. This is from somebody named not a Negro. I guess they're saying that they're not black. I'm, it sure must have made you happy to have those boys roasted alive. This is what they said in this letter. This one right here came from London, England. It says, we feel that this unfortunate mishandling of human lives cannot be wholly divorced from the prevailing race attitudes and conflict under your administration. The psychological impact of this case will be terrific here in Europe. It is the sort of thing that these people do not forget easily. Somebody from Virginia wrote this devil and said, I hope your measly heart is capable of feeling the sting of the race hate you as a leader of your gang started last fall. And that's what he is. Is race hating? Yes, he's the leader of a gang. Somebody from Detroit wrote, you are just as responsible as if you had struck the match. Facts. I agree with this. 
I'm glad these letters that came to him weren't wanting all on that, you know, you know that. Well, you know, this is, don't is no is no need to try to overanalyze and try to you know think that it ain't what it is. Keep it real. And these letters that were wrote to him are exactly what it is. Somebody from California wrote: Each time I see the newspaper by line, Little Rock, Arkansas, I I shudder because I know it means another atrocity against the Negroes. Of course, Little Rock, Arkansas, a disgusting place. You know this this state of Little Rock or this state of Arkansas. They sure do have the right logo on their football at their university. A big, fat, wild pig razorback. It's perfect for the state of Arkansas and the governor and anybody in politics there then and now. And you're all going to suffer and you're all going to pay for this. Now, I know some people are thinking, did the families get compensated for this happening to these, these, young, these young black children? No. No. Listen. Most of the survivors filed claims with the state claims commission seeking $25,000. One person asked for $50,000, and there were claims for sums in between $25,000 and $50,000. The state ruled that they're only good for $2,500. So that's all they got. They got $2,500. This, this is how the state felt. So this is just a sick, sad story. Arkansas, another event. The state, the government forgot about it. They had something to do with it. They covered it up. They're not looking into it. Why? Because it's dealing with black children. You know, it's dealing with black children. Um, and this is one of the events that people actually know about that's tucked under the rug. There are also many events in American history that there are no, there's nobody left to even talk about it, where everybody was either, either killed and the descendants have passed away that we don't even know about. You know, they're trying to cover up and not talk about this this Holocaust or this, this massacre, but it's a horrible, tragic event in American history. Another one dealing with the system of racism, the religion of racism, white supremacy. They're not getting to the bottom of this. They're not looking into it. And anybody who has taken any office in governor as the governor of Arkansas or president of the United States of America since this day has not done anything to look into it because they all, they all are pawns or they all play a part in a system of racism and white supremacy. I don't care who they is. So people, get in the comments. Let us know, are you related to any of the victims of this massacre, this Holocaust in Arkansas? You see these boys' faces, they look like y'all. They look like us. I know there's some people on YouTube who are related, you know, to some of these boys. I would like to know if there's anybody who, um, who knows where the superintendent Lester Gaines was or any of his people, because I'm not saying that Lester Gaines was guilty. He was a man with a job, but... I believe that there's more that he knows. I believe there's a whole group of people that know more about this. They just have been, you know, shut down due to fear or silence and things like that. Because I believe there's somebody that directly knows, yeah, this person, he did this, 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 and this, and this is why they did it. I do not believe this was electric or due to, due to lightning. I believe that somebody did this, a white supremacist, did this in order to scare the community scare black people about some other things, whatever. But it's a shame that this had to happen to this, these black children. Remember, they're boys that died, and then there are other ones who were burned. We don't know how badly they were burned as well. So I do believe this is a well-orchestrated massacre or a holocaust. All right, y'all. Get down in the comments. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you know anything more about this. Easy.